So remember what we're doing right now? We are still talking about hyper stuff. We are talking about hyper volumes right now because triple integral basically shows you something that you cannot imagine, which is, for example, hyper volumes, hyper spheres. Hyper sphere is when you cut a sphere and then, you know, more spheres pop out with the same, same idea with hypercube and so on. So we did something first, introduced the idea of the triple integral. This is your hyper volume over here. Now we're checking the volume below the four dimensional object and the shadow or the base is a three dimensional object. So we just increase the dimension. And then we told you that some applications are, for example, finding that E is a solid. If E is a solid with a density and E is used here below the triple integral, density is the function in three in 4D. So this is your new variable. I don't know, M equals or whatever you call it. Then the mass can be found as a triple integral of that function, which is density over E. That is the idea. So we use it quite a lot because of that as well. Usually not for finding volumes, to be honest, even though today we're going to do some example with the volume. So we started this example. It is actually in your homework. I just checked. This example is in your homework. Find the mass of the solid E with the given density between the paraboloids. So again, think about this. It's not a hyper volume right now. The four dimension represents some kind of force quantity of the object. So the density is that quantity and the density is changing. The density of the water is fixed number. The density of some kind of uh, unitary nice object is a fixed number, but sometimes density can be different. Imagine a cantaloupe, right? It has different density inside on the edges and so on. So this is the function that changes the density of the object. And we now need to calculate how heavy this object. The volume gives is calculated using double integrals. And then the third integral gives you the mass of this object. Very interesting idea. Between two paraboloids with the negative signs concave down, with the positive sign concave up. And then the shadow is your D. So that's what we're going to use right now. So let's do that again. If someone asks a homework problem and I said, this looks very familiar. So just check these notes now. As always, step one, you sketch the picture. Here it is. So step one is uh, sketch the picture. In this case, first 3D. So we see the 3D picture. Now we can figure out what the bounds for my 3D variable. It's not necessary Z. So that's what I'm going to do for your homework. I will make a video explaining you that sometimes 3D variable will be Y, but it's going to be in 3D. Y equals something can be a three dimensional object. In this case, Z, Z is in 3D between smaller and big one. In this case, the one that's concave down is larger because it's on the top. The one that's concave down is the one with the negative x squared and negative y squared. So I'm going to put it on the right hand side, 10 minus x squared and y squared. And then the smaller one is concave up, which is x squared plus y squared plus 2 color coded. So, so now, yeah? Why is the red one smaller? The red one is at the bottom, that's why. So z goes up and down. And you are looking at the, the, this object. So this Z will be running up and down, up and down from something to something. So from will be from the bottom to top. <coughs> and that's exactly my bottom and top. Good question. Thank you. <coughs> so now we know how to start the integral. If you want to keep accumulating the information, that's what I like doing. And we know how to start the integral. You chose dz to be first. And again, we're going to teach you how to change that. dz goes first. Don't touch the function inside. That's the density. Put it inside. It's there. Two z's inside. That's a given function. That is given. We will be changing it in cylindrical and spherical coordinates. But for now, you can keep it like this. z is a variable that changes from two x squared y squared plus 2 and 10 minus x squared minus y squared now we're going to 2d so step 2 
still a picture but in 2d so the moment you finished working with this part of the triple integral you're going into two, di two dimensions now that is the d in this case you see they call d so look at d d is what the shadow going to be of this three-dimensional object and basically it's this let me put it in green this is your the two-dimensional object we're gonna find how big it is from the intersections of these oh, from these two paraboloids so they do intersect each other at these points that will give me how big or small this circle is or the radius so sketch the picture again in 2d it's a circle that's called d that's how it was called with the radius r like so to find how big it is we're gonna find points of intersections intersections of these two paraboloids so now 2 plus x squared plus y squared equals 10 minus x squared minus y squared if you simplify it will be 2 x squared plus 2 y squared equals 10 minus 2 which is 8 divide by 2 gives you x squared plus y squared equals 4 indeed you saw it visually it was a circle and equations uh, supported this idea it is a circle centered at zero in radius yeah, yeah. two so radius is two thus d is a disc is it a disc or a circle yeah. what's the difference less or equal to so this is a circle but we remember that we are looking at this solid object right so to fill in this circle we will talk we are talking about the disk so it's a disk it's a disk and that's why my radius is changing r will be between what and what it's keep growing from zero to four or two two, two. thank you because two squared so now we can also figure out the uh, second step of the integral but the thing is it seems like we just taught you recently that if you're working with circles try to avoid using uh, x y and z's we don't want to work in cartesian coordinates when we work with circles we better switch to spherical or cylindrical we did not learn cylindrical yet but we did learn spherical for double integrals and we are working with double integrals right now this part is a part of the double integral so let's switch then switch to polar for double integrals and we just learned how to do it before the exam x squared plus y squared equals 4 becomes what who remembers r squared equals 4 because x squared plus y squared is r squared theta though so r squared equals 4 that's the equation r is still running from 0 to 2 but theta is not really known what is happening with theta let's see here's my circle the theta is running from what to what from 0 to pi good job well the exam average is good so I kind of assume you got it this part <laughs> now we can start finishing writing the integral so the mass the mass will be the triple integral and the thing is i would do like this the mass of this 3d object is going to be a triple integral and then we have this 2z which we are integrating first so the notation is very new for you that's what i want to point out it's going to be d for these two integrals only for the third integral we actually know from what to what it is running it's inside has 2z then i'll put in blue dz z is from can you tell me Back squared plus, y squared plus, two. plus two and the top is 
Thank you. So we're gonna finish integrating that, and in light blue it will be dx dy, which we are going to convert, and we did already into polar. So let's integrate this. This becomes integral integral d. 2z gives you with respect to z. d squared, d squared over 2. 2 cancel out with 2. So now we just need to plug the top function 10 minus x squared minus y squared minus, don't forget to open parentheses, that's how you mess up the result if you don't. The bottom function is x squared plus y squared plus 2, but with parentheses. Just a second. And now the dx dy is still here and in this step we're going to convert everything into dr d theta yes which one oh each <laughs> yes good job How, why do we need to square who knows z squared. z squared over two times two gives you squared and squared thank you let me put it in the same color Now, the thing is, we don't have to simplify all of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't have to simplify all of this because we can always call x squared plus y squared as r squared. And now we start converting everything. This is r squared. This is minus r squared, right? Minus minus gives you plus. So it's actually 2r squared in the integral. Now it's double integral, which becomes 10 minus r squared, but it's also squared, so people will have to work with the formula first before collecting terms. r squared plus 2 squared. Remember, we know why we're doing this, because we don't want to integrate x squared and y squares again and again if you can convert it all into polar. And then, let me see. What should I do now? R, R, R. Yes, good job. Don't forget the pirate idea. It's going to be r, dr, d theta, right? So r is part of the formula. r is uh, changing from what to what? Zero to two. Zero to two theta? Zero to two pi. Zero to two pi, amazing. And then now you do some algebra. This is calculus one here. You simplify, integrate with respect to r. There's no even use substitution here. It will be all polynomials. And with respect to theta, it gives you times 2 pi, so it's going to be 192 pi. should be positive. It's a mass of the object, right? Yes. So the dx dy gets replaced with the rd. Yeah, okay. exactly. We did replace it using x equals r cosine, y equals r sine. x squared plus y squared is r squared. More questions? Yes. Uh, will we ever end up... Uh, the polar before we integrate z. Mm, we, we could do it. Actually, we're going to do it right now in cylindrical coordinates. You will see it. Okay. This was just easier because then the thing is you want to convert this as well, right? And we did not teach you how to do it yet. So we're going to teach you this week how to convert this. And that's why I first integrated, plugged these parts, and these parts are easier to convert. Right? Because we don't know any correlation between Z and polar. Yes. Um, I, I had another question. So, it's, just, it's really simple. Um, so, X squared minus Y squared is negative R squared, not negative X, negative Y. Hmm. Let me factor out. Minus X squared plus Y squared. Like so. I see. Okay. So minus, yeah. oops, minus R squared. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. More questions? Then, let me tell you one interesting application. So I keep saying that we usually don't use it for volumes, but there is one nice example when we do. The volume, the volume of E is going to be triple integral if there is nothing inside but one, dx, dy, dz. Remember, we keep showing you what does it mean to integrate one single integral of one double integral of one now it's triple integral of one so the single integral of one was the interval remember the double integral of one was what who remembers 2d areas volumes and three three 
triple integral is now a volume. So in general, we don't use it, but in this case, we do. Is it like so, a formula? Yeah, it is formal. Let's put it in the box. It's a very unique example, so it's actually not very handy, to be honest. But E is some kind of region enclosed, and you can just put all the numbers. You do have it in your homework as well. That's why I want to point out. Very easy calculations, but you need to set up all the numbers carefully. Now, how would you set it up? Okay, let me show you a quick. <laughs> I wanted to move on to the spherical, to be honest. So, but uh, sure, let's do one more example since it's not too bad. Example y equals x squared, z equals 1 minus y, and then z equals to 0. Find the volume where E is the region enclosed by the surfaces. So E is enclosed by this. Find volume of E. Step one, a picture. Start with the Z equals 1 minus Y. That is some kind of plane. What plane? X is missing. So what does that mean? The X, Z, Z, it's in the direction of X. Because Why? because <coughs> X uh, is anything, right? Since it's missing. Anyway, I will show you the picture. Let's try to draw. Remember the first couple classes we were learning how to draw everything. So let's do it like so. X, Y, and Z. The plane Z equals 1 minus Y is going into direction of x because x can be anything here so this is x direction direction while z and y are fixed x can be anything so let's try to draw it something like this a okay a plane y equals x squared that is a parabola parabola cuts the plane. So let's draw it. Y equals X squared cuts the plane like so. Draw the parabola. And if you redraw it in 3D, it gives you this nice shape. Imagine it's like a cushion, which you can sit on. It looks like so. Nice looking parabola which is standing on the floor, uh, but with rounded, kind of like a chair, to be honest, like so. Here is the problem on the floor. So it's like over here. And then goes to 3D. Z equals 1 minus Y. Z will be evaluating this volume going up and down. D is this 2D surface. In 2D plane, or I would say the shadow of this object on the floor. So if you want to speed up the process, let's see how we build the integral, triple integral, dz. z is from big to small. Now, in this case, it's pretty obvious that z is 1 minus y. It's given so, so that is nice that we don't have to figure it out. So it's going to be the top, but what is at the bottom? Zero. zero because this is z equals zero the moment we are done with the first in inner part of the triple integral now we're going to 2d and we looking at the bottom of the whole picture you need to have good imagination how to flip it around maybe tilt your head and actually do it so the parabola y equals x squared this is your floor actually is looking very familiar we did it before in calculus one classes or pre-calculus classes, like so. The thing is, it has a cut by the plane. The plane, when z is zero, over here, this one, when we collapsed everything in 2D. So this is my problem. But when z, when z is zero, because we're collapsing everything onto the floor, what y is going to be here? One. one. So that's kind of the whole idea. Plug 
z equals to zero. The moment you shrink 3D into 2D, you plug the third variable, zero, or sometimes not zero. Sometimes it's actually shift, so maybe some number. And that's how you collapse everything in 2D now. Now you're talking about, you can choose which one you like, Y or X rotation, um, integration. Let's do Y, it's easier here. Y is from the line to parabola. So that do you know what I'm doing right now? I'm choosing to go dy first or dx. And we just learn how to choose better. If you want to do this case, you will have to do right side of the parabola minus left side of the parabola. That is not very convenient. It's easier to see that there is a line at the top and then a parabola at the bottom. So that gives me the idea that y will be from the function to a function. So let's choose dy case, right? That's kind of the idea. So y is going to be from what to what? X squared. From, so a smaller one. X squared, and it goes up to line y equals one. All agree? Comments, ideas, right? But then x at the end will be from a number to a number, dx. Let's put it in different color, maybe green, dx. So x is running from this number, which we don't know, to this number, which we don't know. Kind of have to find those numbers. How to find those numbers? It's negative one to one. How did you find it? You plug in You do x is equal to the square root of y. Right? Uh, you f yeah, it's correct. I would say we find intersections of those two curves, those two graphs, right? So x squared equals one, and then you have only one solution, one, right? <clears throat> Yes or no? no. <laughs> Plus or minus? I'm kind of waiting for you to wake up. Plus or minus? From minus one and one. From minus one and one. And this is how you do a setup. What is going inside of the integral? One, one. How do you know? Not only because it's a formula, nothing was given. There was no density given, there's no function given in 3D. They just said, you know what, there is an enclosed 3D object E enclosed by these curves find the volume volume of what well actually one so we're gonna put inside one and that will give us kind of very easy fast integration so this is my integral integral with respect to z is just z so i will have double integral from minus one to one from x squared to one z plug in one minus y minus zero so it's just zero dy dx you see how fast i integrated it because there was no function it made it easier now i finish integration it's just a double integral we know how to do that minus one and one with respect to y it's going to be y minus y squared over two yeah. plugging in one will be one minus one over two minus plugging in x squared x squared minus x squared squared so it's 4 over 2 dx integrating carefully this which gives you x to the 5 over 10 minus x cubed over 3 plus x over 2 plugging minus 1 and 1 carefully collecting all the signs gives you 8 over 15 that's the volume one was just uh, again a function in a, a 4d so that gives you exactly the volume triple integrals here gives you a volume very cool idea and that takes us finally to the spherical coordinates questions about this one setting up is the hardest part i do know why you are not happy about this in general because this is the hardest part. And you have to have very good imagination how you going from 3D to 2D and different types of 2D, different types of planes. So I will make more explanational videos for you tonight and you will have more stuff to watch or follow for your example. Cylindrical coordinates. We kind of learn about them. We you just don't know about it. <laughs> 
Uh, we're going to call it cylindrical coordinates. They help us to evaluate triple integrals. It's exactly the same, uh, just using polar integrals in triple integrals. So it will not be very new. Unless you really did not like spherical coordinates before, it will look the same. Look at what you have here. X is still equals R cos and theta. Y is still equals R sine theta. X squared plus Y squared is still R squared. But now there's a third variable added because we have triple integrals, right? And the third variable is Z equals Z. How unusual is that? And then now let's figure out why and what is happening here. Cylindrical coordinates. It is actually makes sense to be honest, because what is cylinder? Think about that. The cylinder is a circle, right? When there's no z. When z is zero, it's just a circle. What kind of circle? X squared plus y squared equals r squared gives you center zero zero radius r. So in 2D, it will be a circle. But then z shows up and creates the height goes up and down or left and right if it's tilted or maybe with the angle z at infinity goes to infinity and minus infinity goes to minus infinity so it gives you what this object is called a cylinder so it makes sense they call cylindrical coordinates and now let's see how we're going to convert them in 3d so I will redraw, actually I can keep it like this, and I will show you that instead of this point, instead of describing this point as x, y, z, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to describe them r and theta like we did before in polar. We know how to do that. We need to say how big the radius is and then how much the rotation was happens with theta. And then we need to describe how high this point is above or below the ground, the, the plane. That's what we did not have before because we did polar only in 2D, remember? So whatever we're doing right now, we're switching, we're changing polar and moving into 3D. And in 3D, there is a height of this point. What is this height? Z units height, and that's why it stays the same. So the formula will still have R dr d theta, but now it will have also a Z variable there. So that's kind of the interesting part. Yes. And that means that example where we saw two z, we can't really cancel out z as anything. Why would you cancel it out? No, in the example we saw earlier, where, mm -hmm. where our our, uh, our density is based on two z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't like make it r squared or r. It, yeah. It just always is going to be z. because it's up and down. We will teach you spherical coordinates, and they actually will avoid using z at all. But cylindrical coordinates is like a transmissional idea here. Very interesting ideas. What kind of famous surfaces are easier to describe in cylindrical coordinates than in Cartesian. Guess what is our e surfaces? Yeah? Surfaces. R equals one. What do you think is this? Draw. In 3D, don't forget we're working in 3D. But the good point, r equals 1 is a circle because nothing is fixed except how far we're going around the circle. Length 1, right? So it's a good point if you're imagining a circle. r is 1. So r is a distance how far I am from the center. I am 1 away from the center here and here and here and here and here and here and here. But it is a three-dimensional object. So what do you think it's going to be? A sphere, Let's, it's interesting, yes, if I do the sphere, if I do a sphere, then this probably will be some kind of 3D equation, which reminds you a spherical equation, which is what? X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals R squared, right? But Z and X and Y are not fixed here. They can go, well, let's say it this way x squared plus y squared equals r squared we know that so one will be a square root of x squared plus y squared this is how i can rewrite r equals one right yeah. Yeah. 
R equals 1. R squared equals 1 squared. R squared is x squared plus y squared. So you take a square root and you use the positive one. Now we can say x squared plus y squared equals to 1 if you square it both sides. That is a cylinder. A cylinder. It goes up forever. Z is not fixed. And down forever. Z is not fixed. But X and Y are fixed with the equation. X squared plus Y squared equals 1. No, it's a cylinder. <laughs> Funny. The sphere will be plus Z squared. X squared plus Y squared. I would explain it this way. Z is not there. So you have X squared plus Y squared plus 0 Z squared equals 1. Z can be anything. Z doesn't have any restrictions. The restrictions would be like so. Then it will be a sphere. But since Z can go up and down forever, it gives you a cylinder. Make sense? Yes. So it's the difference here that it's a filled cylinder, not a hollow cylinder. So if like R is always one, and we have constantly having a sphere moving up, is that just? I think it's hollow though, because uh, uh, like you said, R is fixed, is one, right? Yeah, but then if you have C equals one, and you got like another. Z. Oh, good point. But R is fixed one, so you cannot move to half or so. So Z is going up and down forever, but only on these distances, on the edges, right? Yeah, but um, so if you go one down like, in the Z direction, mm -hmm. right? Like instead of just having like a circle going like this, you know, so I'm going like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so it's, it's like going always. up and down, but always fixed with a distance away from the center at 1, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. No, good point. Good. See, the imagination here is important. It's a good question. It's hard to imagine it, and then if you do, it gets easier. Example 2. That was example 1. How about what happens if you fix the angle? Theta now is fixed, pi over 3. And then let's assume that radius is not negative. So we fixed the radius before, now we're fixing the angle. What does that mean in 3D? Let's, what do you think? Eh, almost. Let's see. X, we don't call them X, Y, and Z anymore. We have R, theta, and Z, remember that. So everything is described with respect to rotation now. We could try to figure out what the angle means from the arc tangent, if you will remember. But the idea is the angle is fixed, yes. So in the first example, we're, um, we don't have Z or theta. Is that kind of a... We have any kind of Z and any kind of theta. Yeah, okay. yeah, let me actually comment this. That's actually a good idea that I should comment. Any Z and any theta but fixed fixed r equals one that's what is happening here right so any angle it can be here or here or here but it has to be in a distance one and it can go up and down yeah here the angle is fixed and it is pi over three figure out the angle with pi over three if you remember that this is x and y pi over 3 will be something like so let's call it theta equals pi over 3 if the angle is fixed height z z is any and radius is any that means i can walk away from this zero point zero zero as far as i want what do you think that can be but they also tell us uh, keep R positive, though. Is that a plane? Yes. Very good guess. See? So, good imagination. A plane goes like so. It is a half plane because we don't go to the negative R. Well, which, I don't know. It's just the extra. I, I kind of think it's an extra here, but why not? Let's have only half plane. So, half 
plane. Just an example, I guess. With the angle pi over 3. This may be a little bit confusing why we, when doing that, we learned the equation of the plane before, which was pretty complicated, if you remember. You just passed the exam and we ask you to build the equation of the plane, tangent plane, normal plane. It has lots of variables there, if you remember, and you have to find normal and everything. This short notation, theta equals pi over 3, immediately describes the whole plane. You don't need to find anything, and that's why we're using these. Sometimes they are more convenient. Yes. So you mentioned r is greater than or equal to zero. How, how could you have a negative radius though? Let's see. What would negative radius I think what they mean is not to go to the negative x and y. Kind of, I also was thinking about it. So even if you go there, radius is still positive though, right? Even if you go like this, mm -hmm. so Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Even if you go here, Still so it looks fine for me. So that's kind of, I was always also confused why they even added there. Eh, let's keep it. But yeah, good point. So here's your plane. Finally, let's do z equals 4. This, that one is interesting. Example number 3 is interesting. Let's do one integral before we go. How about this? What is happening if z equals r? That is pretty cool idea here. z equals r. So, who has good imagination? What does that mean? Think about that. Angle can be anything. Is it a cone? Do you think... Uh, okay, let me do it smart way. Uh, the one guess was a cone. Agree, disagree, or any other guesses? <laughs> That's a good point. How do you know? What kind of intuition gave you the way that it's a cone? Because, like, equals R would kind of be a line like uh, y equals x, but then there's like a circle going around it, like the end of theta. Mm -hmm. So it's like a circle that gets bigger. A circle that gets bigger, that's a very good explanation. A circle starting at 0 radius, so R is 0, R is 5, R is 10,000, R is a million, or infinity. Circle is growing, right? Z is growing together with circle with the radius of the circle. So Z will be zero, Z will be five. So you're connecting those points and it becomes infinite cone. That is the idea. Pretty cool, good job that you got guess it. And you have to say it makes sense. Pretty cool that we can describe such a complicated equation, check the equation in Cartesian of the cone in one short phrase, Z equals R, done. The infinite radius gives you infinite height and theta goes around, around, around. Again, we can do the same uh, calculations we did before. Z equals a square root x squared plus y squared because r is a square root of x squared plus y squared. So z squared equals x squared plus y squared is a cone. Very cool. Question. Okay, let's do one integral and we can go and do lots of homework. <laughs> Yay. Yes. Post in the forum because I keep checking the forum because I can see it will be challenging homework. So, evaluate the following integral, which is triple integral with the y squared inside dx dy dz over e. e is the region between the cone. e is the region between the cone and then let's cut the cone. I don't want to have infinite height. And z equals 2. What is z equals 2? And the, how would you call it, z equals 2? In 3D. What is z equals 2 in 3D? Like a plane. It's a plane. Good job. It's a plane two units up infinite x and y possibilities but z is fixed so height is fixed right so we're just cutting the cone it's an ice cream cone cut it in general if you see x squared plus y squared pieces it's a, uh, a cone z equals i never wrote down the equation for the cone x squared plus y squared over here 
In general, if you see x squared and y squared, you want to convert them either into cylindrical or into polar, which we're going to learn on Wednesday. And so that's the hint that you need to change that. That means that we also should change y squared into the uh, cylindrical. So let's do that. Step one, before the picture even starts, we are talking about the function of three variables, x, y, and z, and it's y squared. It's a four-dimensional object. How would you change it into the cylindrical? Who remembers the formulas? Cos and sine. Cos and sine. So just r sine theta. Squared. Good job. Squared. So it's going to be r squared sine squared theta. That is my conversion into the function. The function instead of x, y, and z now depends on the radius r, angle theta, and height z. That's the new function inside. Step two, and now we repeat everything we did before. Sketch the picture, first picture in 3D. We already know how it looks like. It's an ice cream cone. Here it is. Cut it with the plane, z equals three, not to make it infinite. So we have z equals two. z equals two, and the cone is a square root x squared plus y squared. Let's convert it into the cylindrical. The cone is so ugly, like so. How would you convert x squared plus y squared? R squared of R squared, which is R. And we just told you Z equals R is a cone. So how we convert Z equals 2? Do we have to? Nope. Because in these coordinates, Z is uh, just exactly what we need. In spherical, we'll be converting Z as well. Now let's start building the inequalities. Z is between. We're almost done. Don't sign so hard. Z is between smaller, big one. Big one is the one that's on the top. So 2 actually goes to the big part. Agree? Because Z is changing from the bottom to top or top to bottom. What is at the bottom then? Yeah. Eh, 0 will be a fixed number. Z equals 0 is this plane. But it's not the plane that stops it's your Z to grow. It's always different r, right? r depends on how far do I go. If you actually do z equals 0, it becomes a cylinder like so. To, make, to keep it to be a cone, we'll be using r. Make sense? z is heating r all the time. This is my z. So we figured that one. Then we go into 2D like we always do. What is the shadow of this cone? A circle, exactly. What kind of circle? Z is zero in 2D. So, well, actually, we will we'll not call it zero. What we're going to do, we're not going to go and put it down over here where Z is zero. We're actually going to see what this location is. This is my 2D picture. But in this location, Z is two. So plug Z equals two into Z equals uh, x squared plus y squared inside of the square root. That will shrink three-dimensional object into two-dimensional with the height two. So instead of the floor, we're going to use the plane lifted by two units up. Yes. Shouldn't we also just use the fact that z equals r and just say r equals two? Yeah. Just yeah. Find it above. You can do it. There's a different way to do it because we already figured out. That's a good point. We could just use it. r is two. That's a good point. Let me do it slowly. Uh, because this will be convenient for your homework, to be honest. 2 equals square root of x squared plus y squared. That's going to be 4 equals x squared plus y squared. That is a circle centered at 0, radius 2. So r equals 2. 4 or 2? Two? 2. 2 is going to be my limits for the radius from 0 to 2. Since we have the full circle, theta will be? Pi. Or zero to two pi. Zero to two pi. Theta is from zero to two pi. R is from zero to two. That is from the two D picture. Good. The full rotation. 
finish up the problem step number four actually building the integral triple integral used to be y squared dx dy dz over e e itself is a three-dimensional object it's a cone with a cut at height so that's why the whole thing here is four-dimensional where y squared is this object in four dimensions then we converted it all y squared became r squared sine squared theta that's the function inside we changed everything to be uh, in cylindrical coordinates so what should i write down now r dr d theta don't forget the pirate sound good job that is a very good actually usually people forget the r but you see this pirate joke made it much better let's finish just a second unless i made a mistake i think shouldn't be dz dz good job dz now adds up i just like the sound to be honest but yeah you're right so z is changing from two let's go back and see z is changing from r to two r is a smaller location that's the cone part in 3d two is the cut it line cut it plane r in 2d is changing from zero to radius two theta is uh, the whole rotation in 3d uh, in 2d rotation of the circles circle from zero to two pi and now you integrate how do you do that just slowly integrating actually in the end you will have to use either oh it will be actually not that bad because that just becomes z, right? like so yeah that is just z so let me finish for you that is going to be integral integral with respect to z we're just adding z but z becomes 2 minus r right so you can even do like this 2 minus r piece shows up still multiplied by r squared but r squared times r is r cube sine squared theta like so and now it's double integral which is just dr d theta r from 0 to 2 theta from 0 to 2 pi and you can break this into two integrals since there are no variables and limits of integration you can actually have products of two integral from zero to two pi where is my angle no angle no angle sine right so one integral will be just sine squared theta d theta times integral from zero to two with respect to the r all functions with respect to the r will go to this case dr products of two integrals let me just finish it will be eight fives pi which is the answer yes i'm a little confused uh, if you scroll up one more step mm -hmm. isn't it, uh, one more thing, sorry. isn't that whole thing here to simplify it isn't that just a constant which is when you take the integral of it would just be z so yeah that's what i did this was z bar from r to 2 which okay. is 2 minus r and then where did the r cubed sine squared just a second people r cubed sine squared is waiting for its turn to be differentiated integrated with respect to r and theta separately r squared will be dr r squared will be r4 over 4 okay. sine squared will have double angle formula there okay yeah questions yes good job people see you on wednesday no quiz on wednesday we're gonna move it to friday Thank you.